Okay, yeah, sorry for that. The the last one is Le Moyen Ziwan. Le Moyen Ziwan comprises of human resources, which is the people who work in an enterprise. Hope that's clear. So we move on to an environment of an environment of an enterprise. So we're going to look at it in terms of a flu. A flu which is it's it's just like a movement of either resources or money between two places or more. So we're going to look at what is a flu. We're going to look at its characteristics. And lastly, we are going to look at the types of flu. So by definition, a flu is starting from there. I hope you can see. Il s'agit d'un mouvement de biens et de valeurs qui se produisent entre l'entreprise et ses partenaires dans un intervalle de temps déterminé. So, yeah, this simply says a flu is a movement of resources or resources and their value between an enterprise and its partners. So, look, going to 2.2, les caractéristiques de flu. Uh, Premièrement, il y a les caractéristiques. L'essence des flux. L'essence des flux says the first characteristics is the first characteristic. Sorry, is l'essence des flux. We says tout flou a une point de départ et une point d'arrive. Which says each movement of goods or services has a destination and an origin. So here's a small example, which would be a client buying goods from an enterprise. The goods, the, or, the, good, the origin of the goods is the enterprise and the destination is the client. In terms of monetary terms, it's vice versa. So the client is the origin of the money and the enterprise is the destination, I hope. This concept is clear because it's really, really important. So yes, it is. Okay, cool. So the second characteristic is the value of the flu. En comptabilité générale, les flux sont toujours mesurés en unité monétaire. Des rames, généralement, toute opération fait donc l'objet the do flu, même valeur, mais des sens opposé. Oh yeah, this is what I explained previously. Each flu has two effects in a transaction. So in the case where a customer, a client buys goods from an enterprise. So if we're looking, if we're analyzing this transaction in terms of the goods, the origin of the goods is the enterprise and its destination would be the client. And if we're analyzing the same transaction, but looking at the point of view from money, so the origin of the money would be the client and the destination of the money would be the enterprise. I hope, yeah, I'm guessing that's clear. So we move on to le type de flu. Selon la nature des flux, on distingue entre les flux réels et les flux financiers. Et selon le nombre d'agents économiques concernés, les flux, on distingue entre les flux internes et les flux externes. So firstly, we will look at the flux réel. So this one is pretty easy. It's, ce sont des mouvements de biens, de matériel et de services. So this is just a movement of tangible goods and services. So this example is a bit trivial, so I'm going to skip it. So on to there. So the first one, selon la nature, according to their nature, we distinguish between the flu financier and the flu réel. So financier, it being the movement of money 
or, pay, or method of payments, and the flow real is a movement of the tangible goods themselves. So that does it for the first two, selon la nature de flux. Now we move on to Ah, oh, yeah, B. Let me try to enlarge this. This is way too much. Okay. Yeah, so now we're going to look at, we're going to see the types of flow selon the number d'agents economic concerné, which is as the number of economic agents concerned. The first one is le flou antenne. So yeah, this one is basically the movement of goods and their value within the same enterprise. I think from the name it's clear antenne. Then we have the second one which is B2, which is le flou extend. So this one would be simply the movement of goods and services and their value between two or more enterprises. So that summarizes it. Then here's a table, table de recapitulative, which is like a summary of the flus, all of them. So if you wish to study them more, I would advise you just to simply look at this table and it would make your life way easier. Okay, so here's, and there's an exercise here. So, let me just take a screenshot of it. So there's an exercise here where we have l'opération, le flux réel et le flux financier. So we are going to discuss it later on in a group on how to go about it. Let me just mark the page number. So I don't know if you guys would prefer to have like work in groups or individually. I don't know how best you'd like to test your understanding because if we just move, 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 you didn't be able to really grasp the concept. So we're going to try, I'm going to do the first two, which is two and three as examples for you to get the sequence. Then you guys will be, will have to do four and five. Four and five. Just a small table. Exercise. So we move on to the seven principles of accountancy. So the first principle is the set principe de comptabilité générale. The principle, premier mot, il y a le principe de continuité d'exploitation. So this one simply says that you are supposed to prepare your accounting books in a way that you estimate in a way that your business is not supposed to be liquidated. It's supposed to have a continuous existence in its day-to-day -day transactions. You're not supposed to say, no, maybe after five years, we're going to end this business, but you're supposed to prepare the accounting documents in a way that it's supposed to live jusqu'à infini. Yeah, it's supposed to live forever. So the second one is le principe de permanence de méthode. This one states that you are supposed to use the same methods to evaluate the same transactions from year to year. Let's say today we, we sell some goods. 
so the way I would record those goods in my accounting documents should be the same way I would record them if the same thing were to happen the following year. So I hope that's clear for the first two. Sorry, may you please repeat? Okay, so starting from the first one, this is the principe de continuité d'exploitation. This one, it says, okay, let me read it to you in French first. Selon ce principe, l'entreprise doit établir ses étapes de synthèse dans les perspectives d'un poursuite normal de ses activités. Explanation is that you are supposed to prepare your accounting documents in a way that your business is, you're not supposed to estimate the number of years your business is going to live or is going to be in operation. It's supposed to live until forever. That's the, that's the whole, it's just like a protective mechanism also for investors. They are supposed, they're supposed to get an assurance that if they invest into a company, they will be, they are sure that the company will continue, if I will continue paying them back and will continue operating until an unforeseen calamity. So yeah, that's, that's it for the first one. Hope it's clear. Then the yes. second one. The second one, it says, le principe de permanence de méthode. It reads, selon ce principe, l'entreprise doit établir ses étapes de synthèse en respectant les règles et les, et les méthodes d'évaluation et les présentations d'année à l'autre. So, the, an explanation for this one is, when, some, when we have an accounting transaction this year, let's take into account, or let's, for example, I sell some goods. I will record that as sales. Yes, as sales. So in the next year, the, the, the year after, yeah, the following year, if the same transaction were to happen, I am supposed to record it as sales as well. I'm not supposed to find a new name for it or anything like that. That should be it. And the third one is, Le principe de coûts historique. It reads, en vue de ce principe, les éléments de patrimoine restent inscrits en comptabilité à leur valeur d'entrée. So, this one simply says that if we buy a fixed asset today, we are supposed to record it in our accounting documents at the value we bought it for. So that is, let's say today I buy a vehicle costing 30,000 dirhams. Next year, the vehicle is still supposed to be valued at 30,000 dirhams. The value is just not supposed to fluctuate or change for whatsoever reason. The fourth one is le principe or independence des exercices. It reads, la vie économique et financière de l'entreprise est découpée en exercices comptables. Chaque exercice correspond à une période de 12 mois. So this one simply states, if I were to simplify it to the least, it would be, if you have a transaction this year, you're supposed to record it there and then this year, and it stays this year in this year's accounting period. You're not supposed to leave it for a later date or anything like that. It's always supposed to remain in the year you acquired the good or something like that. That's it for the fourth one. Um, coming to the fifth one is the principe de prudence. It reads on uh, Can you please repeat the fourth one? The fourth one, okay. So, what is it here? La spécialisation et l'indépendance des exercices. A simple explanation is that if you acquire something this year, you're supposed to record it there and then in your accounting documents. You are not supposed to leave it to say, let's say you buy. Um, 
a vehicle. Yeah, vehicle would be a most practical example. You buy a vehicle this year, you are supposed to write it in the books of accounts to say you bought it this year. Do not leave it for maybe that you record it later on or for whatsoever reason. Whenever you acquire an asset, you record it just there and then in the year and month it belongs in, in the year and month you acquired it for. So hope that is absolutely clear. The fifth one is le principe de prudence, which reads, en termes de ces principes, les produits ne sont pris en compte qu'ils sont définitivement acquis à l'entreprise et les charges sont comptabilisées dès, dès qu'ils sont probables. So to explain this one, I'll give it in terms of an example. Let's take into, let's, let's for example, um, an internet cafe. An internet cafe has, runs computers. So computers are fixed assets, but we know that someday that computer may catch a virus or it might just have a, a sudden breakdown. So what this principle helps people do is they, like in terms of this internet cafe, the person is always supposed to, let's say, have a reserve account or just some reserve money to cater for an unforeseen accident or something. Let's say one of your computers just gets damaged or maybe a careless person turns it off in a bad way or it catches a virus. So what this principle helps is that it helps people to plan ahead for their expenses only. So when you have an expenses, it's, it's obvious that the computer is going to be destroyed one day. So it helps people plan an expense in future. Then for an income, the same was you on the same example. It helps people not to account for money they haven't yet gotten. Let's say someone says they will pay tomorrow. You are not supposed to record it in the books of accounts that they have already paid. What if the person just dies or maybe is an accident in an accident the same evening and you lose your money? So your books of accounts would be wrong by that effect. So expenses are taken into char into account for the future and incomes are only taken into account when you have definitely acquired them. That's that. The third, the sixth one is le principe de clarté. This in English is the principle of clarity. It would simply say that we should be clear in our recordings. If something happens, we should record it and not be biased to any extent whatsoever. And lastly, we have le principe d'importance significative. So this Excuse one, me. yes? Uh, could you please repeat the uh, six principle? Six is one, okay. We have, the sixth one is le principe de clarté. It reads, en vue de ces principes, les opérations et les informations doivent être enregistrées dans le compte et sous les rubriques adéquates. Okay, this is unnecessary. A simple explanation would be, this is the principle of clarity. So we are always supposed to be clear in our transactions, like in our recordings. If something happens, we are always supposed to record it. Whether it's a loss or a gain, we are always supposed to record what is true and clear. That's that. Moving on to seventh one. It's le principe d'importance significative. So a simple explanation for this one would be it's a principle in which in which states that all information and all information all necessary information that managers need to make day-to-day -day decisions should be 
given to them. Like it's it's just a principle which ensures that managers have the necessary information before making an important decision. So that's it with the set principle de comptabilité. I urge you to go through them in French if you have problems. I am readily available. Moving on to the next thing. Okay, so there was a red book I required you to I requested you to get some time back. I'm not sure if you've been able to do that. So this part is it's really really important both for ENCG and economic students. So please if you had forgotten about it, I urge you again to look for it. Any convenient bookstore would have it. So I am unable to direct you on this part exactly yet because I need that book to show you how exactly we use it. So I'm going to skip this part for a later date. All these things. So moving on to this, the notion of resources and des emplois and analyse des flux. So this is just like a build up from what we did earlier on les flux continues all the way to here. These are just notes, 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 notes. Okay, I'll just, yeah. So we have two main principles here. We have les ressources et les emplois. In, in the English system, this would be debit and credit. L'emploi being debit, and the resource being credit. So there's this golden rule of accounting, which says debit, debit the giver, credit, debit the receiver, credit the giver. So I hope you've got that debit, the receiver, credit the giver. That should, that would help you, it would make your life easier if you just know that simple principle. So according to the flow we did earlier on, this would be, so the resource is the credit side of a transaction and the employer is the debit side. So in each transaction, there are flows, which I said they move vice versa. It's either they are going from the resource to the employer or the other way from the employer to the, to the resource. I don't know if that's clear or you need further explanations. Okay, I presume that's clear. So just, just a quick note here. From the says l'emploi et la destination and the view of the transaction is the destination. So, l'emploi is always the destination of either goods or the value or the monetary value. So, we move on to then a simple note here is the resource. The resource is the moyen that permet d'obtenir l'emploi. So, the resource is is the means by which you use to buy the employer. An example of a transaction would be bought goods by cash. So the cash is a resource. The cash is what we use to acquire the goods, which is the simplest way I can explain it. So we have so yeah, there's an exercise, 
exercise the application here, which you, it's on page 42, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to go through it together just for you to be able to see what is really meant by the resources and les emplois. First thing is you should always know in what perspective you are you are speaking from. It's either you are speaking from the resources or les emplois. So for the first transaction, it says achat de marchandises. Then l'emploi in this case would be acquisition de marchandises, which is why it's the why is it the emploi because. It's what we bought with the resources we use to buy the merchandise is the debt. So we paid, we got it on credit. So a simple question you'd ask yourself is, what did we use, which would be the resource? And to get what, we should be the employer in this case. Second example, which is on the ninth, the fifth, payment on espace d'achat de fournisseur the furniture. So the employer, what did we use to, the simple question again is, what did we use? What did we use? We used money, a space, or well, money is a space. And to get what? Furnitures. So the money in this case would be the resource, which is what we used. And to get what? Which is furnitures. The third example, I hope you're able to follow through because this is something that is really, really important as well. It's a build up for what we're going to do in front. So the third transaction is on the 10th. It says, règlement par check d'un prime d'assurance. So what did we use? We used money in the bank, which is check, which falls under the agent on bank which is the yeah, resource, and to pay for what or to buy what? We used it to buy the, to pay for the prime d'assurance, which falls under l'emploi. So this is debit, I repeat, l'emploi, debit, the resource, credit. Fourth one, the yeah, fourth one is a bit tricky. So it says, vend de marchandise en espace. What did we, in this case, you're just supposed to, think to yourself, what gains and what loses from my, if I have both of them, what do I gain and what do I lose? So what I, if I'm a sailor, what I gain is money and what I lose are my products, my goods. So, which leads us to here, yeah. Vestment, l'argent en espèce, which is what he gained, which, yeah, a payment of cash. And the resource is what he lost, which is a merchandise. On the 13th, again, vend des produits finis à crédit. We have vend des produits finis à crédit. So this guy got the goods on credit. So he did not pay for them there and then. But whatsoever the case, what I lost are my goods and what I gained is credit. Yeah, so I guess these examples are sufficient for you to be able to understand the logic. But there are some transactions which have more than one thing you have to write. It's not always that it would be this easy, one, two, one, two. You'd find one on this side. Pete foot on the 12th, okay. So the transaction on the 12th says, Van de Marchandise, on a space. So I'm looking at this transaction. I'm looking at this transaction as the seller in this case. So I sold some goods for cash. And what I the simple thing is employer is what you gain, the resource is what you lose. So what I lost uh, being the seller in this case, what I lost is my goods. I lost, I lost goods, so that falls under the mission. This falls under the, the resource. 
And what I gained is a sum of money for selling the goods which falls under Lamploa. I hope that makes it a bit more clear. Just ask yourself, what are you losing? What are you losing would be Le Resource. And what are you gaining would be Lamploa, too simple. Obas, looking for one which is a bit more complicated. Okay, voila. So the transaction on the 27th. I'm going to read it from there. So the first one on the train on the 27th reads Reception d'un facture de l'entreprise EBM relative à l'achat d'un ordinateur à 9000 dirhams de laitier est réglé en espèces et le reste est crédit sur 12 mois. Sur 12 mois. So this transaction is, what we have is, is a bit complicated. Like I said, it's not always where you find each side you have one. Here we have the person paying, giving a sum of money of 9,000. And uh, he, he did not pay for it in full. Like he only, he paid something and he promised to pay the other amount later. So we have, in this case, we have a space, which is cash, and we have a credit. So we have two things on the same side. And on the other side, what we lost would be an ordinator, yeah, a computer. So the 27th, you can call it an ordinator or material informatic pictures. Yes, what you gain at Elisha, what you gain is an employer, or yes, an employer or debit, and what you lose is credited or a resource. So in this case, we were the seller and we were the buyer in this case. And what we gained was material informatic or an ordinator, a computer. And what we lost was cash of 9,000 and a debit for this year, which is just getting something on credit from the provider and promise to pay for it on a later date. So hope that clears it out. If you try to do this exercise again, just try to repeat it by yourselves. Find any problems, je suis toujours disponible. Vous pouvez me contacter, quoi que ce soit. Tant qu'on passe. So we move on to this chapter, which is Le Compte. Le Compte, which is an account in English, and Le Bilan, which would be the balance sheet. So starting with Le Compte. So the definition, may que signifie un compte? Les unités retenues pour le classement et l'enregistrement des éléments de la nomenclature comptable. So, a compte is simply the smallest unit maintained for registering accounting transactions. The smallest unit maintained for registering, or the smallest unit used to record accounting transactions. That's it, that's it with the definition. then we have types of cons. But first, before I get to that, I have to explain this. The left side is always reserved for the debit side and the right side is always reserved for the credit side. An illustration of this is a 
is this so the left side which is here which is the debit and the right side is the credit side of the transaction so <clears throat> Moving on to how the necessities of an account. So each account should have, the necessities are the ones in red, should have a date of the operations. Two, the libellé des opérations. The libellé des opérations is just simply a small explanation of what really happened with the transaction. Then thirdly, you're supposed to have le montant impute the Motan Ampute is just the amount each transaction was worth. And lastly, we have the sold. So the sold comes up when there is a difference. So this quant, this small thing, it's always supposed to be equal. Like the debit and the credit side should always be equal. But in a case where the debit side seems to be greater than the credit side or vice versa. You are supposed to find the difference of the two amounts. And to that, you add, you add the missing thing, you add the difference. You add the difference. So let's say, okay, hold on. Let me give you a proper example. Back to this. So let's say this thing is filled up with transactions and on my debit side, I have a total of 10,000 10, grams. And on my credit side, I have a total of 7,000. So the sold is supposed to be the difference between the two totals. But what you write here on the total part is the greatest amount between the two. So in this case, I said 10,000, eh? Okay, sadly, I cannot edit this document. But I hope you're able to follow through. So you would write 10,000 here and 10,000 here. But we initially know that the credit side amounted to a total of 7,000. So what you would do is here, just before the line for the totals, you would write 3,000, which is the difference from 10,000 10, and 7,000, 3,000. And what you'd write here is sold. So the sold is just supposed to serve as an amount to an amount that you add to the lesser side of the count. I hope that's clear. So we have types of counts. We have three main types of counts. We have the first one, which is this one, which is called le compte marié. So they draw their name from how they are drawn. Marie in the sense that the debit column and the credit column just sit next to each other. So the rest of the side doesn't change. So debt, it's compulsory. Libele, it's how a petite explication of what really happened with the transaction. And lastly, we have here is how you draw the name. Like this is where you draw the name from. So we have Comte Marie because the debit and the credit side just sit next to each other. Moving on to, firstly, is everything clear just up to here or maybe there's something I need to repeat on? Okay, so the sold is, okay, let me start from the very, very beginning. So initially what is supposed to happen is when you have transactions, the debit side is supposed to be equal to the credit side. So let's say I bought goods, let's take into consideration a transaction of just a week, a week, yes. You're, you're a regular businessman and let's say a dairy farmer. 
you are in charge of selling the dairy products like milk whatsoever so whatever you do during the course of the week you record maybe you buy some preservatives for the milk you record you buy some you buy some you buy anything and you record you sell something you record so what is supposed to happen is the debit side and the credit side should always be equal at the end of the transaction an accounting transaction in a case where they are not equal there is a difference of i don't know whatever amount you can imagine let's say let me change the things this time let's say my credit side amounts to 15000 dirhams so on the total here i have 15000 dirhams there then my debit side amounts to 10000 so there's that inequality between the two. So what I would do, where the sold comes in, the sold is the difference, the difference between the totals. So 15,000 minus 10,000 would be 5,000 germs. So what I would do is I would add the 5,000 to the lesser amount because what I'm trying to do is make the totals equal according to the greatest um the greatest sum i found so if it's on the debit side i found ten thousand and decided added them up all of them i found fifteen thousand so what i would want is what i want is to have a total of fifteen thousand on both these boxes <clears throat> so i would add so now this is where the salt comes in so is a difference so I know that the debit side only amounted to 10,000. So 10 minus 15, five. So what I would record as here, just for the amount for, just before the totals amount, I would write the 5,000 so that when I add the debit side, it should equal to 15 as well. But what I would record this amount as is sold hope that was a bit more clear. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the second type of... The second type of count is le count separé. So what this one is, is that the main thing is that the debit and the credit side are not They are not joined together, they're not placed just right next to each other. And you'd have to, so most of these tables we have in contability, you'd have to master how they are drawn. Some professors have a tendency of asking specifically how they want you to write, how they want you to write your le conte, yeah, le conte. But this strictly applies for NCG students. For economics students, you just need the basic understanding. You don't really have it practical. You just need to understand what really happens. So unlike NCG students, you'd have to learn how to draw, master all the tables, and so forth. So this one, the compte separé, we have the differences that les dates libellées et les débits, they are repeated. So the dates libellées, debit it starts again that libele credit so the just the whole point of repeating is just so that the debit and the credit columns are not placed right next to each other like the previous one we just looked at but it's still the same principle if we have five thousand on the debit five thousand on the credit that's okay if we have five thousand on the debit and 10,000 on the credit, we would have to find a sold. It's just the same principle. What changes is just how you, how you present them. And lastly, we have the count schematic. This is by far the most useful and convenient type. You do not have to record, you have no libelle in this one. So what you just have is the non the count. Let's say if you're, dealing, if you're dealing with the case, 
cash. So you just have amount figures. So if something is debit, you just write it there. If something is credit, you just write it there. Debit, credit, debit, credit, just like that. But we have an issue of sold again. So the sold is compulsory for all the types of cont. Let's say the debit side is is less than the credit side. I would have to add the amount by which it is less to the debit so that we have, so you're supposed to draw a line here and write total and have equal amounts on the totals. So that's it on the count and we have an exercise application. So if I'm not wrong in counting, I gave you the first one. I don't know if you should note it. The first exercise on page 21. Like I said, I will do the first two, which is two and three. I'll send them to you as examples. So, and you would be required to do four and five. So that's just two questions. And from this one as well, which is on page 55. So we have two. So I really suggest that you work in groups. You should get the, get used to working in groups because teamwork makes a dream work. Um, so on page 55 is another, oh, you don't have to submit them to me, by the way. They are strictly just for, to better your understanding, because if I do everything for you, you would get nothing out of it, out of it at the end of the day. So we have this one. I will do the first two, I think the first two, then you do two or three. So you can send them to me to counter check for the answers since this book doesn't provide for answers if you'd like, but if you just want, if you think you've understood and yeah, it's cool. So page 55 as well, hope you've taken note. page 21 and page 55. So now we move on to, is my screen blocked? Okay. So here's another principle, le principe de la partie double. But do not confuse this one to be part of the seven principles of, of accountancy. This one is just a principle on its own. It has no direct relation to the previous ones we discussed. So don't get that confusion. It reads from where it's underlined, toute opération comptable de l'entreprise est traduite par une écriture effectant au moins des deux comptes dont l'un est débité et l'autre est crédité dans somme identique. So this is the principle of double entry, which states that each and every transaction has two effects bearing the same figures. Bearing the same figures and yeah, same. It's it's the same exact transaction, except you look at it from two aspects. An example is achat de marchandises. So achat de marchandises. If I'm looking at it from the point of view of achat de marchandises, so the two people involved here, there's a person buying and the person selling. So to the person buying, this transaction would come out as achat de marchandises. And to the person selling the goods, it should come out as van de marchandises. So it's the same exact transaction, except it has two points of views, the seller and the buyer, which is what this principle tries to illustrate. And from here in board, l'origine de l'opération correspond à les ressources au moyen qui est utilisé, so the method of payment which you used, and la destination correspond à l'emploi ou le but qui est fait. 
So what did you lose would be the resource, the question for the resource again. And to gain what would be a question for the employer. So main standing point of this principle de double entry is that both figures should be equal. So whether you're looking at it from the perspective of the buyer, it should be equal to looking at it from the perspective of the seller. Let's say bought goods for 5,000. To the buyer, he paid 5,000. And to the seller, he gained 5,000. That's the way it works. And he lost goods worth 5,000 dirhams. That's the way it works. So moving on to... Yeah, so this is an illustration of principe de partie double. So here we have 200 germs on the debit side of the account. And for count B, we have the same 200, but on the credit side of a different account. So each account has two effects, affects two transactions. So Okay, so I know I've talked a lot just up to here. So I think a five minute break for you to be able to get back your Yeah, get back your focus. So just like a five minute break, please do not log off. Just you can just leave it. We'll be back at thirteen sixteen. Yeah.
Okay, so to pick up where we left from, do you have any questions just up to now, concerns, anything? Like, Okay, so we continue from the tip, the con. So we have two main types of accounts, which is the first one is the Conte situation. The Conte situation. <coughs> so it reads, ce sont, sont destinés à l'enregistrement des opérations concernant le patrimoine et de l'entreprise et sont pas concernés. So these counter situations are strictly attached to what we call the bilan, yeah, the balance sheet. So these accounts are basically composed of your assets and resources. So your assets would be the debit column, and your resources would be your credit column. Resources join from either yourself or a loan taken from somebody or something like that. So, which marks the end of the first step of account, which is the Conte situation. Reason for them being called the Conte situation is because they show the financial position of a business at a given date, which is the main purpose of the BILA it shows the financial position of a business as at a given date. So at the end of the bill, you're going to have to, you're going to be able to know whether your business is profitable or it's the opposite. So the second type of count is le compte de gestion. <clears throat> this one is basically used to make day-to-day -day business transactions day-to-day -day decisions. So it is not concerned in, it's not concerned in the, um, the bilan. It is concerned in another document called the CPC. So the CPC is, it's an abbreviation for compte de produit échange. Produit, which would be what you produced, your incomes, your, like when you produce something, what you gain from it are incomes and the charges are the expenses. So I think you should note that as well. The produit are the things that you gain. Like you sell a good, you sell something, you sell a service, you give you offer services to people. What they give you are produit and your monthly bills, your monthly expenses, salaries for workers, those would be classified as charges or expenses in English. So this comp digestion is just used to make day-to-day, -day, it's just used to make day-to-day -day decisions because it's attached to the charges and the incomes that you earn, that you make and earn on a daily. That's it for the two main types of comps. Okay, to, for your better understanding, I know I said Previously, we had different types of how to draw the count. We would say this one would be not types per se, but categories. Because if I say types, it's going to be the same as what I previously said when there's the count marqué, le count schématique, tout ça. So, fonctionnement des comptes de bilan. To teach this, I really need that small red book. I need to, okay, yeah, here's some. 
So we're going to look at the bila now. In English, the balance sheet. So it reads, le bilan est une table qui représente la situation financière et économique à une date déterminée. So, like I explained before, the balance sheet is a table which represents an accounting, an accounting situation which shows the financial position of a business as at a given date because it's drawn for a period of 12 months. It's not supposed to buy past 12 months, nor be under less than that. That's it. Then for, it reads again, the bilan se compose des éléments de actif et les éléments de passif. So what this one says is that les éléments de actif would be the debit side. So you, you really have to take note of how they change how the, they progressively change the word debit and credit throughout accounting. So in the bilan, they refer to them as active and passive. And previously, we referred to them as emploi and les ressources. Previously, again, we referred to them as debt, et debit and credit. So throughout the naming, changing or what, you are supposed to know what is what and what falls where. So active, I repeat, active is the debit side, is l'emploi at the same time. So it, ha it now has three names. And the passive is the credit side. At the same time, it's le ressource. So each side has three names as of now. So this is how the bilan is drawn. Its main distinction is between active and passive. Then from then we have subdivisions of those. So starting with the active, I would go there. Active, which is a debit side. Then the subdivisions are active immobilize, which is the first one. Active immobilize would be fixed assets. Yes, fixed assets, we would compose of fixed assets. So things like vehicles, lands, machinery, furniture, those for under fixed assets. Then we have active secular. Active secular are non-fixed assets, rather current assets. So these are assets that are easily liquidated or they easily change, they easily be able to change into cash. You don't buy them to keep them for good. You buy them for the purpose of selling them to make a profit. So these things would be your goods, whatever your company is involved in selling. If it's like a tax shop, it would be all the goods in the tax shop and see this week. Then we have a treasury active. This one is, this one comprises of money, like monetary, small, small money. Like, okay, money in short, the methods of payment you use, how you keep your money, first of all. Bank, comprises of bank and cash. Those are the two main figures in the treasury active. So I repeat, active immobilize, these are fixed assets. Vehicles, buildings, I should have said. Active secular, these are current assets. Goods, things bought for the purpose of resale. Treasury active, these are methods by which you keep your money. So then we have, well, these have other subdivisions as well. These are, I would just tame these as headings. This is just headings and they have subdivisions, but when I'm hoping you guys would have the books by the end of this week so that we can get done with it once and for all. <clears throat> so moving on to the third one. No, moving on to the passive side, which is the credit side of the bilan, we have financement permanent. Financement permanent, we would classify them as loans from lending institutions or just other people. But the loans we use to start our business with. Then we have passive secular. So these are loans as well. But the difference between these financement permanent and the passive secular would be these financement permanent. Uh, we, they are loans that we hope to repay back 
after a period of one year. And these passive secular uh, loans that we repay back during or less than a period of one year. So what really makes the difference here is the duration of payment. Oh, surely just a question. Then, yes. Uh, so for equity, why does it fall under? Excuse me? Equity. Like so equity, like in English, what people invest in to start a business and whatnot. Why can it fall under? Ah, no, it's more permanent. All right, thanks. Sure. And thirdly, we have the treasury passive. This one would be <clears throat> it would be the um, it is the methods of payment that we have, the small, small methods of payment that we have by credit. So you just ask for, they don't even classify to be called methods of payment because they're really, really small, only for small, small figures. So that marks the end of the bill. This is not how it's drawn, but this was just to help with understanding, better understanding. So, yeah. I'm sorry, can you put it on the finance map, Emana? D'accord. So, fin yeah. finance map, Emana. Finance map, Emana. Yeah. Are, are the methods of... Uh, finance map, Emana, is... They're like loans. We would classify them as loans and loans that someone gets in the hopes of repaying back after a period of one year. So that's it. And so let's say a loan from the bank, that's also one would repay after one year. If it's less than one year. So it's just financial help that is repayable after a year. But this financial help would also fall under investments and the like also for under this category. Then the passive secular are loans as well, but to be repaid back within a period of less than one year, strictly less than one year. One year and above from a small permanent. So we move on to, oh yeah, Taliso, here's your point actually. So, je possède et je dois. Here, this is an illustration or a better understanding of the um, financement permanent part. We have je possède. These are things that we actually own ourselves and we put them into the business. Et je dois. Je dois are the dates to invest the, the loans. Okay, the credits that we have drawing back from other people or companies or investors. We move on to this. I need the book as well to explain this. So, yeah, another application, le principe de la partie double. Par convention, I read from the other person. Par convention, le sens de la variation de compte de la situation se présente comme Sweet. So the first one says, le compte d'actif augmente au débit et diminue au crédit. So the sense in this is that if an account is a debited account by its nature, it increases by debiting it more. Reason being is that when you debit it more, the amount will fall on the same side as the figures that were already present so then for i don't know if that's clear Maybe kindly please repeat. okay so i said for the first one it reads le compte d'actif augmente au débit et diminue au crédit so 
what we have here is that if we have a transaction and already before there were some goods which were placed on the debit so to increase the value of this account in general we have to put the amount we have on the same side as the amount that is already there because you only add in the same column you don't add from other columns you only add like going down in the same column so it's, let's say i had five thousand on my debit my debit account so we have have in mind a, a count marie okay count marie will be easier so we have two columns and on the debit side we have five thousand and on the credit side we have nothing zero so if i were to have another five thousand in the next month so the total of this account would move from five thousand the previous five thousand to ten thousand which is what is meant here so now here we are the saying a dimini or credit this let's say this five thousand the second five thousand we added wasn't five thousand it was two thousand and we added it on the credit side so it means what will happen is the sold in fact here we are talking of the sold so in the case where it was ten thousand okay let me just Let's say we have, I hope you're able to follow me. Or maybe Dafide Womba. Dafide Womba. Okay. So we had a 5,000 before, at the start, we had the 5,000. Then the second part, we have another 5,000. We add it in the same column, debit, add it in the same column. Then there's credit, which is empty it's empty so the first example i'm giving the credit is empty so the total of this the total i would write at the end would be ten thousand. Ten thousand. you see the value has increased from five to ten which is what they mean so in a case where the second five thousand what it wasn't added in the debit column but in the other column which is the credit column so what would happen is the total, the total, the ending total would still remain strictly 5,000. So the total would not increase at all, which is, my, which is what is meant by these two points. And the other one, it says, le compte de passif augmente au crédit et diminue au débit. So augmente au crédit, let's say we have an account. And firstly, the, the amount was placed on the left-hand side which is a 5,000, same, same example. If we hope to, so the, the credit is on the right-hand side, sorry. If we hope to increase the value of this, of this account, we have to place an amount directly below the amount that was already before. But if we place the amount on the opposite side, the total would not increase. You only write the total, the largest total, at the bottom of at the bottom of the the account so i hope that's clear because yeah that's quite important as well okay so yeah this is basically an illustration of what i was saying so starting from here d yeah this 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 account if i had a five thousand there if i wish to increase the total value of this one I would need another 5,000 there so that the total here at the bottom is 10,000 on one side. So if it's 10,000 on one side, it's automatically 10,000 on the other side as well. So now let's take into consideration we have a 5,000 here and we have on this other side, we have a, a 2,000. So the total at the end will not be 10,000. No, it will be 5,000 hope that's clear you only add them an individual column only increases value by adding something just below it not from the other column no the same column just below it so that's what is being said here as well here here here
Just a minute. Okay, here's just some definitions that will help you increase your vocabulary. Starting with the first one, which is font commercial. So this one, I would, I was, I'm just going to explain it in English. So font commercial is composed of just the clientele, the low. If let's say you want to buy a company. Let's say a well-known brand like, like Adidas, let's say, if you want to buy shares or you want to buy the whole company, Adidas. So if you buy the company and, so you have two options, to either keep the company under the same name or to buy what we call fond commercial. The fond commercial would be the clientele, the, the passage. You just basically buy the whole company itself. So what you just change is ownership. You buy the name as well, you buy the logo, you buy the, the clientele, the clientele which are, well, the customers who are always, yeah, who are always buying from you frequently. You buy everything. That's only if you include the fund commission. So I hope that's clear for the fund commission. Second definition that these are just things that you're supposed to just know. Second definition is the subvention. The subventions are in English these are subsidies. So products like okay, let me just read. Ce sont des ce sont dons accordés par l'État à l'entreprise. So sub, sub subsidies these are just these are it's money that the government pays for certain goods and services to be cheaper. In Morocco, I am well aware of bar. I think that's a subsidized product because it's considered uh, a basic need. Yeah, so no matter what, the price of bar will always remain low because the government pays the taxes and other charges that are supposed to be given out and thirdly we have le réserve legal et juste c'est une partie des bénéfices qui l'état impose à l'entreprise de la réserver au temps de crise so this one i'm going to define it in terms of a bank so le réserve legal in a bank is an amount of money which a bank should always have like a, a certain amount which is blocked Let's say the bank is giving out loans and what, what, whatever the bank does, it should always never use the reserve money. That's just money. It's almost considered government money, except it still stays with you, but you are not able to withdraw it or use it whatsoever. It's just, it's just a reserve to search for emergencies, I think. Then lastly, we have billets de fonds. Ce sont des reconnaissances de dettes signées par l'acheteur d'un fonds de commerce. So, billet de fonds is, is a document where if someone owes you money, they are able to, or let's say you, someone owes you money, eh? And um, you, you as a person can forget that that person owes you money. So you instruct your bank to pay them automatically. Let's say you get paid on the 20th and you get your loan on the 10th. So this billet de fund would be a document written to the person you got the money from so that after the 20th, they can just go themselves to the bank and demand for the amount that you owe them. So, yeah, that's it. I think that...
that summarizes this for now, but there is one more thing we have to do before we call it a day. Oh, just, just a minute. Okay, I think we can call it a day for now. I can't seem to find what I had set to give you as a research. I'm going to send it over in the group later on. So please, if you've got any questions, concerns, or whatsoever, I'm at your disposal. Yeah, ask away. Um, what time will the video be uploaded on YouTube? The video, I think just immediately I'm done. Okay. Immediately I'm done. Yeah, any more questions, concerns? Yeah, and uh, I had the challenge to, to access to this lecture. So I don't know the link which we will be using. Ah, so your challenge, was it based on the link I sent before or maybe it wasn't going through a network issue? What was the problem exactly? Uh, for me, I thought uh, we are using the same link which, which we used for the other classes. Ah, okay. I think the problem was with mine. I wasn't able to log into that one as well, so I opted to create...